Well, Netflix is about to unleash a new Skop, Skeet and Donner six-part series featuring South African-born Hollywood actor Arnold Fosluer, who you would have seen in uh, Silverstone Siege, which was on Netflix uh, recently, but also in the movies like The Mummy, Blood Diamond, G.I. Joe, and many, many more. And uh, Arnold takes on the starring role of Dan Ludic alongside local heavyweight talents. And I'm honored to have him join us on the Santon Times, our Arnold Fosluer. It's great to have you on and to be talking to you. How's it, how's it, Santon? Hello from Arnold Fosler and Alberton. <laughs> well, Arnold, it's so great to have you on, and it's so amazing to hear you say these things, because we've uh, almost embedded you as a Hollywood Los Angeles citizen, and to have you back in town doing South African movies, and not just South African, Afrikaans uh, series is, is quite something. <sighs> Yes, yes, it's uh, it's really a dream come true. It's a seed I planted quite a while back. Um, you know, I'd been working steadily in the States and enjoying it, but uh, I had this thing in the back of my mind that I wanted to come back to South Africa and, and work here in the industry maybe once or twice a year, you know, either do a feature or if there was a cool series. And, um, and I put the word out and it uh, didn't really matter if it was English or Afrikaans, but as long as the scripts were good. And then Silverton Siege came along a uh, year before last and uh, we shot that and that just came out a few months ago. Netflix was a huge hit worldwide. And um, end of last year, I got a, a great script, uh, uh, Ludic, six one hour series. Afrikaans series. Uh, when I say Afrikaans, it's really 60% English, 40% Afrikaans, sort of the way we speak in South Africa. And uh, um, it was great. The scripts were fantastic. And I had to say yes. And uh, Netflix gave us the dough and uh, we made a pretty cool series. I think people are going to love it. Well, give us a bit of background to the character of Ludic. Yes. Don Ludic is a furniture magnet. He's uh, think of you know IKEA or whatever throughout Africa. He's a he's a big time businessman and has his hand in shall we say various businesses. And then a family member of his gets kidnapped and held for ransom, and suddenly he has to pull strings and work with uh, former enemies and uh, you know alienate friends in order to uh, get his brother in law back. So. Um, there's lots of uh, lots of action, tow truck business uh, action in Pretoria. The the, the series is, is conceived and set in Pretoria, in uh, so Pretoria is part of uh, sort of the backdrop of it, and uh, it looks great, man. I'm I'm really digging this thing. I've seen all all six episodes, and uh, I think people are going to love it. In fact, I know they're going to love it. You've spent a lot of time on the silver screen. I mean, there was one uh, cinema house in South Africa that used to say it's always better on the big screen. But as a Hollywood mm. uh, actor who's been doing this for a long time, how has streaming changed the business? It really has changed the business. And certainly in South Africa already, you know, the streamers have changed it. Before you had two or three monopolies, whether they were, you know, good guys, but they were monopolies, uh, SABCs or MNETs or whoever they were, Stir Kinikor, you had to go pitch your stuff to them and then they'd uh, display it and take a piece of the cut and that would be that. Um, if the movies were any good, they would make it to a foreign market. But with streaming, there's quality control sort of baked in from the start. They're not going to get involved with you if, if they don't think your scripts are great. You know, that's the, the sort of business model of Netflix and and all these guys that the script is king so once they refine that script and they're happy they give you the money you go off and shoot it and then the wonderful thing for like this ludic thing which uh, is an afrikaans uh, was built as an afrikaans series that's going to be seen all over the world it's not just going to be seen locally on uh, august 26 in a month's time it's going to be seen you know that same night it's going to be on in joburg and tokyo japan and bogota colombia and uh, New York City. So uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for us as South African artists to, to showcase our abilities and our work. And the fact that Netflix think the show is good enough to air, because if it was rubbish, they would have said, listen, guys, thank you, but uh, we'll take our loss and we're just going to can this thing and the world will never see it. But uh, I know Netflix really likes the show and they're hot on it. And uh, we uh, we're we're proud uh, we're proud of our our uh, 
uh, working together about co collaboration with them. Yeah, well, as they would have said, uh, straight to VHS uh, back in the days. Uh, yes, exactly. I mean, the beauty of, of Netflix and the streaming platforms is the fact that we've been exposed to such multiculturalism. I mean, if you think about the biggest show a couple of years back was uh, a South Korean show, which we wouldn't even have understood if it hadn't been dubbed. Or I found myself watching a, a crime mystery drama in Italian the other night, which is also quite amazing. So these kind of shows must also do quite a bit for the language of Afrikaans. I mean, I realize a lot of people in Tokyo won't be watching this in Afrikaans, but there might yeah. be a curious person who switches over and goes, ah, I wonder what language which this is from the the tip of South Africa yes I mean it's we've never had this I know I know Netflix has bought some Afrikaans movies that they have on their platform but uh, this is the first series that they've uh, that they've co-produced with us and you're right um, I mean I know that ludic has been dubbed into or has been dubbed into five languages Spanish uh, French German uh, Portuguese and Polish uh, and uh, so those people that don't want to, you know, deal with subtitles will just even here, there'll be some English speaking people here that'll just watch it in South African English, so to speak. And uh, but uh, weirdly enough, um, I've asked people and uh, quite a quite a lot of people like watching it in the original language format. Uh, they say that they sort of get a, a better sense of it, you know, especially in this case, if it's if half of it's in English and the other half's in Afrikaans. You can follow the English stuff and then there's not that many subtitles. So, uh, but to each its own, it's dubbed into all these languages. So people will get to enjoy it in whatever format they want, but it's a big deal to us. It's the first Afrikaans uh, series. So uh, we want to knock it out of the park. You know, we want to, we want to, we want to crush it. So uh, that's where we're at. We hope it does uh, incredibly well, which will then uh, spur Netflix on to do more of these, not just Ludic, but other shows that are Afrikaans, they'll see that there are viewers out there, that there are expats all over the world that, you know, work in different places and they'll tell their colleagues, you always ask me what it's like in South Africa, watch this bloody Ludic show with Arnold Fosler and you'll see what it's like in Pretoria. Well, uh, Arnold, you celebrated your 60th birthday last month. Can you believe it? So happy yeah. birthday and congratulations to such a milestone. Uh, when you look back on your career to date, what have been some of your most special memories? You know, there's not one specific thing. It's sort of all just a blur of, of, of going to set or, or you know, going, going to the theatre and, and, and doing plays. But um, I think the one thing I always take away from it is that I've been able to sustain a career. I always joke I've, I've been able to pay the, the water and lights. Uh, and yes, the power is on in America. Um, I pay the, I've been paying the water and lights for 40 years uh, doing this, um, you know, this acting thing. And uh, that in itself is, uh, is probably my greatest achievement. Yes, there were highlights. I did a play with Al Pacino on Broadway. I've worked with Depardieu. I've worked with some great people and um, great directors. And it's all been uh, it's all been a joy. But the fact that I've been doing this for 40 years and, um, uh, you know, I've been paying my way as an artist uh, or been paying my bills as an artist is, is really my biggest achievement. In a 2019 interview around uh, another film that you did at the time, you were quoted as saying, if you could do it all over again, you wouldn't leave South Africa. Why did you say that? You know, at the time I went, I, I'd done a few things here and I'd, I'd been wildly successful at a very, very young age with the Butti movies and Circles in the Forest and stuff like that. And I was 24, 25 and I sort of thought, well, what's next, you know? And uh, the only place was the States because at least I could speak English. I thought the French made the best movies, but I couldn't speak a word of uh, French, so I wasn't going to go to France. Um, what's different now is the fact that there are streaming services. You can, you can be an artist, director, actor, you know, cinematographer, and work on these streaming things. And, and people are going to see it in Hollywood. I mean, this on the 27th of August, somebody in Hollywood is going to watch Ludic that night, you know. Uh, certainly my agents will, but we hope other people uh, will too. And uh, they'll get to see your work. So you don't have to go there and impress upon them, you know, that you're from here and this is the kind of thing you do and this is your vibe. You can work here and the stuff gets seen everywhere. So ideally, you do good work here and then 
uh, Hollywood in the, in the form of Amazon or Netflix or, or uh, Apple or whoever all the streaming services are, will then seek you out because they're all coming into Africa. They'll, they'll give you a call and say, hey, we watched your series and it was really cool. And what else have you guys got? What else do you want to do? We want to be in business with you. So in a sense, Hollywood uh, will come here. You don't need to go there anymore because of this uh, worldwide platform. Well, it's certainly exciting to uh, live in 2022, the way the world has become such a small place. And old Foslo, it's been an absolute uh, privilege to have you on the Santon Times Hour. And thank you for making the time. Yes, no, thanks a lot. And check out Ludic and, uh, you know, drop me a line and tell me, um, tell me what you thought of it. It's, it's a really cool show and it, it is a Skopsky Donner thing, but it's a, it's a lacquer one and people are going to like it. Well, I'm certainly going to be setting my alarm clock and putting it into the diary. And uh, for those listening, Ludic drops on Netflix screens globally on the 26th of August. So make sure you've got that down on paper.